So today we're going to start on chapter two in Microsoft Excel, and we're going to learn about formulas, functions, and formatting, the four or the three F's of alliteration. And we are going to have the same thing where somebody's come to us and once again given us this incredible thing that they wrote out saying this is how we want the spreadsheet to look. When in reality that's not exactly what's going to happen in real life. I'll just go ahead and close this. And we are on page so we're going to open up Excel and we're on page 69, 70. <coughs> we're on 70 right now. Because here we go. We're going to start in cell A1. We're going to put in our title, and our title for this one is the Mobile Massive Store. That's who we're doing this for. And we are making a bi weekly payroll report. I am sorry. I'm sorry. There we go. Now, in the book, it's going to tell us to go to cell A3 for our next one. We are not. We're going to skip a cell because I'm going to teach you something important in a minute. We're going to go, yeah, we're going to skip row three. We're going to go to row four. And we're going to go ahead and type in all our headings as they're found on page 71. Employee, hire date, dependents. And when you get to hours worked, don't go past number four. Just get to hours and then stop. I'm going to teach you a little trick right here. That, that'll get you back and forth. So when you get to hours, everybody watch this really quick. I'm up here, I've started typing hours, and what I actually want to type is hours worked, but I don't want to have it go really long, because I know that there's not going to be a lot of information in this column. So, <coughs> excuse me, if I hold down the Alt key and hit Enter, notice that it brings that space down, so I can say hours worked, and now when I hit Tab, it hasn't written it out all the way, but it's actually given me two lines in that cell. Alt, you're going to hold the Alt key down and then hit Enter. And we're going to do the same thing for hourly, alt, enter, and then rate. You hold the alt key, the one just to the left of the space bar, and then you hit enter. And then we're going to do gross pay, federal tax, whoops, state tax, net pay, and tax percentage. And it was because I was using my tab key. When I hit enter, it brought me all the way back to the beginning. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to start inputting information. And just because I don't want to spend all day typing, I'm going to put my 10 key in again. I'm bragging about it. Ask yes, you may ask a question. Move information over, like let's say I, I I wrote in E F and G. Is there a way to clear out E and move the information? Yes, to you go like this. If you want to move everything over, I would highlight, hold okay. Shift, and hit the arrow keys. Okay, so hold Shift and then arrow key over. Okay. Just like that. You're gonna hit Control X for cut. Control X for cut. And then you're going to move right one, and you're going to hit Control V to paste. And then enter at the same time. Control V, as in Victor. And notice it moved everything over, just one. Oh, okay. Did that work? And then Control V. V is in Victor. Got it. So we're going to go ahead and start typing in information. What we're going to type in is actually found on page 72. There's an entire table. It's table 2-1. And this time, we have different things in here. We're only going to type over to hourly rate. So we're going to fill in this little section. So employee to hourly rate. So I'm going to start off with Charvat, Emily. And, I, and on something like this, I like to actually go down because I can keep my um, fingers on the keyboard. So I'll type all the names first. But you can type it however you want.
we can't pick people's names. We have to just accept them for who they are. <laughs> That's right. My wife was watching my YouTube videos last night. She's like, you're a dork. <laughs> Well, you know what? You need her to keep grounded. <laughs> Otherwise... <laughs>
So as I moved it down, it's adding up the cells just to the left of it, the two cells to the left. So we're going to change this up a little bit, though. We're going to go to federal tax. Now, there's no guaranteed formula for a federal tax rate. Okay, They're just giving us one in the book, and I'm just going to tell you what it is. But according to the book, federal tax equals this this number right here 0.22 so we're going to we're going to grab this number right up here times and now we're going to try and add some stuff together so we need to put it into parentheses times parentheses we're going to do gross pay minus dependents times <coughs> the deduction per dependent, which is right here, close parentheses. So did everybody see that? No, I missed like all of that. G3 <laughs> times parentheses F5 minus C5 times C3. Okay. You don't have to know the formula. You just need to type it in. So type it in, don't click on the, like we did. You can, you can type it in or you can click it like I just well, did. And, and let me just tell you, don't be stressed out about this formula. It's just something that they gave us in the book, okay? So we don't need to like freak out. This isn't something we need to know for Excel, but the thought is, if we think about this, first off, we're gonna, the federal tax rate is 22% times our gross pay minus how much money they're gonna give us back for dependents, right? That's what we're thinking. Oh. So as I hit enter, and I didn't spell dependents right, Nobody caught that one. No, I did, and I, I wanted to say it, but I thought I was wrong. There you go. <laughs> but I typed it right in my... All right. So now what we do, now that we've had this, we can see that the federal tax rate is going to be... Two, or the, they're going to take $288.93 out of our paycheck. We want to copy this one down. What do we do again? We just drop it down. Exactly Click, whatever. drag. It's, yeah. Oh, That's crap. What just oh, happened? Mine, mine didn't work either. Well, Wait, this is that? because what we're doing here is when we come down to the second one, Look at what it's trying to do here. It's moved everything relative to where it is, so it's dropped these numbers down. So it's actually on these cells. Well, what if we want to move these two, but we don't want to move these two? We need to make what's called an absolute formula. And this is actually a hybrid formula, but we're gonna use some absolutes where do not move where I'm calculating. So I'm gonna come back up here to this first one again. And what are the, if I click into the formula bar, what are the two things that I do not want to have move? C3 and G3. The way we do this is we put a dollar sign. A dollar sign is what equals absolute in Excel. Okay? So we can make things absolute. Did it not work? Or exhaling? Can you help? No. Okay. So we can come up here and we get in front of the G and we put a dollar sign and then right in front of the three and we put a dollar sign. So those two things mean don't move the column and don't move the row, that, that dollar sign. So don't move from G and don't move from three. And I'm gonna come over here to the C and I'm gonna do the same thing. I want C and I want three to be absolute in this. Okay? Mm -hmm. Is that not working? Yeah. Press that at this point, press Enter. Now what I'm gonna do is watch what happens. When I drag this one down this time, everything calculates outright. And why is that? Because on this one, it's showing me that it's taking this number and this number and then these two numbers. But if I go down one, notice that it moved the, the purple and the green down, but it kept the red and the blue numbers right where they're supposed to be. So now if for some reason they decided to give us a dependent exemption of $28 per dependent. We could type in 28 and everything automatically calculates. Pretty cool, right? In the real world, that's how you do this. You would never put these numbers in the formula. And in fact, I just took an accounting class last semester. It was awesome and horrible all at the same time. We had this one page on the worksheet. The first worksheet was all the numbers. We had 15 questions we had to answer. There were long accounting questions and we couldn't type in one number. We had to do it all with equations, you know, in Excel with functions. And so, yeah, so you, could, so you only could change numbers on the front to get stuff to work all the way through. You couldn't like put in times four and stuff like that. So it was a good exercise to like reinforce that you shouldn't be putting numbers into your formulas. So let's do state tax next. State, state tax is a little bit easier. State tax is just 
this one equals the 0.04 times our gross pay. Enter. 0.04 times the gross pay. Yeah, H3 times F5. Now, if I click on this one and drag it down, what happens again? I get messed up. Gives me a bunch of weird stuff. So what what do we need to do in here, Cameron, to make it work right? We gotta put some dollar signs. In front of what? Okay, we don't want okay, we don't want Oh, we don't want H the H one to be. Right, so we're gonna put a dollar sign in front of the H. Uh -huh. and then in front of the three. And in front of the three. And now I'm gonna recopy that down. And we get all of our numbers. So gross pay, Jonathan, was what? Gross pay is of course taxes. So net pay is? After we take everything out. So what would be our basic formula for this? Be, uh, this equals? You could do that, or I always just do minus minus. But yes, you're correct. That, that would work too. So gross pay minus federal tax minus state tax gives us our net pay. And I'm going to copy this one straight down. I'll show you guys what the formula looks like again so Gabby doesn't freak out. And I don't know what happened, but I have one more column we're supposed to have called tax percentage. So our tax percentage, what? It should be F5 minus G5 minus H5. Now our tax percentage, the formula for this is we're going to say this equals, and we're going to put this one in parentheses, just like Jonathan was just talking about, because we're going to do a little addition before we do any division. Our federal tax plus our state tax, close parentheses, and division is the question mark key, the, the slash right there. So we're going to divide it by our gross pay, which is F5. Enter. All right, you can go back to the formula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would love to show you the formula. Actually, in the book, I know, I never followed the book. Yeah, the book, the, this is the one that we're, well, actually, four and five we're, we're doing. The other ones were all different, so. <laughs> So yeah, G5 plus H5 divided by F5. Make sure G5 and H5 are in parentheses. All right. Good? Not me. What did you say about me? Not you. It, she clarified it was not you. All right, so we're going to drag this down. We're going to copy this one through. And I always like to go off on my little rant right here. Pardon we've me. entered in some formulas, and we've done absolute formulas, which is awesome. Oh, and... <clears throat> What'd you say? I am on page. Oh, I don't know. We've gone so far past here. No, no, we're at like 80. We're on 82. Let me see here. 80. Yeah. So we're going to be on total. Yeah, so we're on 82. So we're going to come down here. We're going to do some totals now. So we're going to make a row. Row 14 is going to be totals. And then we're also going to have an average, a highest, and a lowest. So make those on each row there. Should we be t totaling up the hiring date? Of course. No. But we do want to sum up how many dependents total are in the company. You know that we're So we can just do an auto sum here. Just use that sigma again up here at the top right we learned about yesterday. It's an easy one. We want to know how many hours we'll work. That's great. We'll do the same thing. I would like to find out my hourly rate. Why would this be important to a small business owner, our hourly rate? Does anybody know? That's how much we need to make every hour just to break even and pay our employees. I have a question. Yes. Okay, we will fix that in a second here We're, when we do the, the numbers. But what you can do is if it's a date, just go over here, whatever number it is, hit the comma, and then the comma style, and then enter in the number again, like number one. 
Did it do it? That's fine. We'll fix that in a second. You can just over here is increase and decrease decimals. Decrease it. Okay. <clears throat> so go ahead and total up our gross pay. So I'm going to just grab all these things. We can drag this all the way across. Do not take it to tax percentage because it won't work mathematically. But what we can do is we can actually just copy and paste that formula right there. And that will give us our average tax percentage. Why didn't it work last time? It did work. If you total all the taxes up, well, you probably drug this one down because if you total the taxes up, if I auto sum this, it's going to give me that. It's not going to be the right thing. But if you copy and paste this one down, that's that's the right equation, and then you're doing the math right. Okay, so we've done that. Now let's talk about averages. Let's figure out how to get an average to work. Now. Microsoft Excel has been in development for years. Okay, We are not going to come up with something that wants to be done in Microsoft Excel that has not been done by someone else. And they have spent millions and billions of dollars probably making all this as user friendly as possible. And one of the things they like to do is they like to give us formulas that are common. And maybe we don't want to just sum something up. Maybe we want to find something like an average. If we want to put in a formula we go ahead and go over to this tab up at the top called formulas and we're going to insert a function okay this one over here so we're going to click insert function and right off the bat we can type in here what we would like to do and so I can say in normal English I want the average and what does it do it comes up with everything it thinks that might have something to do with what we're trying to get here so I see average. I'm going to use average. That looks good to me. Yeah, that's what I'd like to do. It says returns the average of its arguments, which can be numbers, names, references, contain numbers. Sure, I want the average. And as I double tap that, it brings me into the function argument tab. Now in here it says, what do you want to find the average of? And right now I can't see it, but if I click this little button to the right, it allows me to get in here and select whatever I want. And I want to get everything from here to here. Why do I not want the 12? That's information. That's not data, right? And we don't want to mix information and data and functions. Just like a graph. So as I grab C5 to C13 and then I hit enter, it will show me down here what it's thinking the total is. If this looks really far off, don't use it. You've done something wrong. You need to go figure out what you've done wrong. But that looks about right. The average is probably 1.33. I'm going to do that. Now I can come over here and just, you know what? We're going to skip average right now. We're going to go back down and we're going to do highest now. Now if I want to find the highest number, what kind of function would I use, you guys think? Um, max. Max. Highest number. I'm going to put it in here so you can see. I want the highest number. It comes up says max A. We're going to use just max. We always want to use the basic version of it on these basic ones. So we're going to use max. It comes up and says, oh, you want the max of C15 because that's the number right above it? And I say, no, I want the max of C5 through C13. Highlight that stuff, hit enter. It comes back and it shows me my, my answer, which would be three. And that's yes, I'd like that, that's good. And down to lowest. If max is what we get for highest, what would lowest be? Min, minimum. And I want to show you a different way to get to functions now. We've seen how to do this insert function, but there's another way. We can actually just hit equals. And as we start typing in the function name, M I N, notice that it's been showing me a list of all the functions that start with that. If I double click on min, it says, What do you want to put in here? And I can do the same thing. I can just grab it. This is if you're pretty good and fast, you can just use that. And it's a really quick way. If you know the function you're trying to use, you can just type it in instead of having to go to insert function. And can you, uh, now you're probably about to say this, but can you drag that phone? Phone yes, phone? that's exactly what I'm about to say. Cameron's ahead of me. So we're going to now select those three things that we just did. Our average, our highest, and our lowest by holding the shift key down and highlighting those three, those three cells. And go to the bottom right where we get our little drag cursor. Click and drag it to the right. And ta-da! This is the one also, this average isn't right, so we're going to hit delete because that doesn't mathematically work. We're going to get rid of that one. But it does tell us our maximum and our minimum, and all these things are in here. 
So we drug all three of them after we made it up once, all the way across. You okay? 